Islamic Pulse has been contacted by believers across the globe asking about the recent protests in Iran which have been magnified by the mainstream media. The very fact that people can protest inside Iran shows the Islamic Republic's freedoms. It is amongst the most democratic of expressions. In fact, it's a part of Iran's constitution. Public gatherings and marches are allowed so long as the participants do not carry arms and are not in violation of the fundamental principles of Islam. But there's been a lot of hype and false information being shared around like this. Captioned, with no option for voting out their supreme leader, Iranians take to the streets to press him to resign. Trying to make it seem like this is an anti-Islamic Republic rally. But if you can read even basic Farsi, you'd be able to tell that this is, in fact, a pro-Islamic Republic rally. America is desperate to distract people from the recent victories of the Islamic Republic. The axis of resistance led by Iran and the IRGC has liberated Iraq and Syria from Daesh terrorists. They don't want to give us a chance to even celebrate or for people to recognize that Iran is in fact winning this war on an economic, military and cultural front. That's why Mr. Trump tried naming Jerusalem Al-Quds the capital of Israel, which backfired miserably for him. With 128 countries voting against the motion and only 9 countries voting for it, behold the axis of where the hell is that? And now they're trying to distract the public again, this time magnifying the anti-government protests which have recently sprung up in Iran. The first thing that we must know is that the vast majority of the people of Iran are in support and favor of the Islamic Republic. Every year on the 22nd of Bahman, hundreds of thousands of people mark the anniversary of the 1979 Islamic Revolution. Last year, millions of Iranians rallied to celebrate the 48th anniversary of the Islamic Republic. If you want to know how successful a democratic system is and how much faith the people of that nation have in their own system, then take a look at how many people turn up to vote. Ayatollah Khamenei, the Guardian jurist and leader of the revolution, who is respected and loved by the majority of Iranians, said, Elections are a pivot of religious democracy. The Islamic revolution provided religious democracy which is based on elections. To participate in the polls and a high turnout is important to which all should contribute. When people vote, it shows that they trust their system of governance. And that is exactly what has happened throughout in the Islamic Republic, with the majority of people showing support and voting. But before we look at Iran, let's take a look at its enemies who try to distract us from their own flaws. In the last US presidential election, only 55.7% of the nation voted, and less than a quarter of the country voted for Trump. And it was followed by mass protests. Following Trump's election to the presidency, students and activists organized protests in several major cities across the United States, including New York, Boston, Philadelphia, Chicago, Portland, and Oakland. Tens of thousands of protesters participated with many chanting, not my president, to express their opposition to Trump's victory. Tens of thousands and they were met by tear gas and riot police and battered. This shows how Americans themselves mistrust their own governmental system. That's not a successful democracy, that's a failed state that's on its way out. It's America that needs regime change, not Iran. And it's a similar story in the UK. Again, only 68.8% of the people voted in the 2017 general election. I don't know what you're smiling about, Theresa May. Nobody likes you. And again, in the 2010 election, only 65% voted. On 26th of March 2011, coordinated by the Trades Union Congress with a crowd of 500,000 people, protests were held on London streets for the anti-austerity movement in the United Kingdom, protesting against government cuts, worsening healthcare, job cuts, etc. It's so funny that those who wave the flag of democracy the most are the very ones who are the most unpopular amongst the people and are part of a system which the people themselves are tired of and don't have faith in. Now look at the Iran vote. 73% of Iranians turned out to vote, with some 41 million casting ballots. That's the majority of the nation of Iran who believe in the new system of Islamic democratic governance, i.e. the Islamic Republic. Back in March 2014, when the voting turnout was just as high, Ayatollah Khamenei said, the meaning of this great participation of the people in the elections is that religious democracy has been firmly established in the country. Now, among those who did not vote are those who do not believe in the Islamic system at all. They do not recognize that it's the American and British systems that are truly failing. They are Shah lovers. They have never agreed with the Islamic revolution from day one. They have never wanted Islamic laws to be 
implemented from day one. They have no religious inclination. These are people who want a society of alcoholism. They want a society where nobody is stopped from committing sins. A society where sexual interaction is not regulated by Islamic laws. They like miniskirts. They want to do drugs. These types of people might be many in the world, but inside Iran, they are very few. Now, not everyone who is in the anti-government protests is like one of these. Some of these people are just simpletons who are disgruntled by the eggs being too expensive or the price of fuel being too high. They watch American mainstream media, movies and sitcoms and because of that they believe that the streets of America are somehow paved with gold and that somehow the liberal democracy of the West is the solution to all their problems. They think that everyone in the West lives a happy and contented and luxurious life. So they want that system to be implemented in Iran. They are ignorant. Back in 2016, Ayatollah Khamenei said poverty has struck the Americans as well. 44 million people are hungry in America. Less than 1% of the people of America are the owners of 90% of American wealth. Human values have been trampled upon in that country. There is discrimination, differentiation, racism, and annihilation of human rights in America. When you shout death to America, it means death to all these things. But unfortunately, a few people who lack foresight trust UN statistics and reports more than the words of the leader himself. So here are the statistics. Philip Alston, the UN Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights, reported after a 10-day tour in America that the United States is one of the world's richest and most powerful and technologically innovative countries, but neither its wealth nor its power nor its technology is being harnessed to address the situation in which 40 million people continue to live in poverty. US healthcare expenditures per capita are double the OECD average and much higher than in all other countries, but there are many fewer doctors and hospital beds per person than the OECD average. US infant mortality rates in 2013 were the highest in the developed world. Americans can expect to live shorter and sicker lives compared to people living in any other rich democracy and the health gap between the US and its peer countries continues to grow. US inequality levels are far higher than those in most European countries. It has been estimated that 12 million Americans live with a neglected parasite infection. The US has the highest prevalence of obesity in the developed world. In terms of access to water and sanitation, the US ranks 36th in the world. America has the highest incarceration rate in the world. The youth poverty rate in the United States is the highest across the OECD, with one quarter of the youth living in poverty compared to less than 14% across the OECD. Is this the system of liberal democracy that you want? This is the reality of America. You need to stop getting your perception of America and the West from Hollywood movies. America is an oppressive regime under the guise of a democracy. The population is an oppressed, sick, diseased, obese, incarcerated, ignorant society. Is that the system that you want? Most of the Iranians living in this country recognize that the Islamic Republic has given them a system which is not perfect, but it's miles better than any